In the name of the living and loving God, who is Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, church. As you know, Luke is the gospel that we're reading throughout this year, and one, one of the character, well, several of the characteristics of Luke is this. Number one is he talks about the Holy Spirit a lot and how the Holy Spirit uh, plays a significant role in the life of Jesus, and later on in the life of the early church in the Acts of the Apostles. Another thing is Luke has Jesus praying a lot. I'm sure Jesus did pray a lot, but Luke talks about that. And in almost all of the significant events in the life of Jesus, Luke's talk, Luke talks about Jesus going to the mountain to pray or praying, and, and, and something happens. Um, so that prayer that Jesus does at very important times is, is what we might call contemplative prayer, or at least it is a deep prayer. It is a silent prayer. It is a still prayer. It is a prayer in which or through which Jesus, the Son of God, feels completely united with God the Father. I mean, that's, that's a sacred space for the both of them. And um, if you remember back seven or eight weeks ago at um, the first Sunday of this season of Epiphany, we called it the baptism of Jesus, the baptism of our Lord, um, Jesus prayed. I mean, Jesus was baptized, he went off to pray, the Holy Spirit came down, and he was filled with it, and he prayed, and he heard the voice of God the Father saying, you are my son, my beloved, the one with whom I am well pleased. Remember that? It's all about the relationship between God the Father and God the Son. Jesus, God the Father is directly speaking to Jesus. It's a it's a one on one. It's really clear. And the point I made back then was that if Jesus experienced that, and we're called to walk in the in the in the steps of Jesus, then we need to hear the same message. We're not Jesus, but we are followers of Jesus. We need to hear that message from God. Um, that we are gods, and that God loves us. And that God affirms us, just as we are. All of that happening through and in prayer. Well, today is the last Sunday after the Epiphany. It's, it's the last Sunday of Epi after Epiphany, and sometimes it's called Transfiguration Sunday because of the gospel that is always used. And guess what? We're hearing sort of the same message, uh, except it's on a mountain. Uh, Jesus takes Peter and James and John up to a mountain to pray. Lots of people in the Bible go up to the mountain to pray. and Maybe even we do that, go up to a mountain and pray. It's, a, it's an elevating, it's a sacred step. It's a, it's a place to be still and wonder at the world. So Jesus... Jesus went up on the mountain and prayed, and uh, something happened. Surprise. The appearance of Jesus was changed, and it was witnessed by those apostles. And his garment became dazzling white, and a cloud came down. Well, Peter also said, let me, let me, let me record this event, Jesus, please. Let me record this event with tents. He was totally missing the point because it was a spiritual event. It wasn't meant to be recorded or, you know, frozen in time. So the cloud came, the presence of the holy. And a voice said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. Now, it's sort of similar, right, to what we heard when the, at the baptism of Jesus, but it is different. And this time, it's not God the Father saying, you are my son. It's God the Father saying to the three apostles, hey, this is my son. 
And he's not saying the beloved. He's saying my chosen one. My chosen one. Sort of referring back to Moses, who was chosen to be a prophet and a follower, a prophet and one who would lead the Hebrews into freedom and who represents all of the law, the beginning of the Old Testament. <clears throat> sort of like Elijah, one of the prophets, you know, who was chosen to go out and call the people of Israel back into faithfulness with God. So at this point, Jesus is the chosen one, like a Messiah, like an anointed one. So you apostles, listen up. Listen to him. And they, they were not able to heal the son of this man, the son who was dying. And so this man comes up and says, Jesus, your disciples, I beg them, your disciples one, are not able to heal my son. Jesus said, all right, I'll do it. And he did. The point there for us, I think, is this. That message to those three apostles, this is my son. This is my chosen one. Listen to him. That is clearly for us. We heard it in the greeting. But it is a message to the people. Listen to Jesus and follow Jesus. And I sort of like it that those apostles didn't fully, weren't fully able to go into that sacred presence and total belief in the power of the presence of Jesus. Um, that they were human. They were human, just like us. But they tried, and you know what? They got better at it in spreading the word, in teaching, and in healing. And here we are today. Today, the last Sunday after the Epiphany. Well, Wednesday, Ash Wednesday, guess what? Jesus is again talking about prayer. Uh, it's the traditional reading for Ash Wednesday. Whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And again, we're talking about something that we now call contemplative prayer. Deep, still, and silent prayer. <clears throat> The reward there is simply to have a deeper, more full relationship with God. That's what the reward is, to really, really know. Go into that private place, get still, get silent, be with God, be still, and be with God. The reward is a deeper and deeper connection with our Creator. And, and I think we're all looking for that. There are a lot of ways that we can get to that point. There are a lot of ways that we can try. And I bet all of us here in some way or another have made many tries and have made progress and have also tried things that didn't work out. The thing about Prayer being a focus during Lent, however, is that that is a season. That is a season. You see it's building up here in the Gospel of Luke. That is a season when we are encouraged to sort of take stock of where are we in our life of prayer. And there are a lot of different types of prayer. But, but where are we right now? It's a good and healthy thing to do. It's not judgmental. It's just a healthy thing to do. And here at St. James, we are inviting and encouraging you to learn more about contemplative prayer. That's what the learning groups are going to be focusing on, on Sunday mornings and on Tuesday mornings. And I invite you to be a part of that. I think it's critical because in this world we are met with so many challenges and the challenges are changing every day. In this world, we have so much on our minds and in our lives to do, to accomplish, to worry about, and it seems like the list continues to grow. And yet, 
Jesus is calling us first to do something real simple, and that is simply to be in prayer with God. Not even to particularly pray for something, not even to pray for some, for a boy, not even to pray for a boy to be heal, healed, or someone to be have a safe journey home. It's it's not that kind of a prayer. It's simply being in God's presence, in the cleanest, most authentic, humble way that we can. It's, it's nothing more than that. But even as I say that, I'm sure there are some questions. How do I get there from here? Because it's not, it's not really intuitive. We think, to produce, we think that we're encouraged, and encouraged to produce, to check the, check the list off, check the items off the list, you know, to get things done. But during Lent, during Lent is a great time for us to slow down and make a commitment to learn how to pray in a deeper way, wherever we are in our prayer life. If you are interested, I wish that you would come to the reception room and I'll tell you more about it following this liturgy. If you are interested, I wish you would contact me and I'll tell you more about it. What we're saying now is this is a great opportunity for all of us to work on our prayer lives. It really is the most important thing we can do as Christians. And what I want to do right now is something that will either that will either make you feel comfortable in your place with God or squirm just a little bit in your seat. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to stand here for three minutes. And I would love for you simply to close your eyes and to begin by thinking this thought, God loves me, God claims me, God affirms me. Just say that two, two times and then continue to be still. If you fall asleep, that's fine. I'm not going to fall asleep because I'm watching a watch. But Use these three minutes to be sacred time in your journey with God through Jesus Christ. Let us begin.
Amen.